Good afternoon YouTube. My name is Brandon. Today we're going to be doing a bunch of welding on some cast iron and we're going to be doing some testing with it. It should be really interesting. Stick around. Welcome back guys. Recently I uploaded a video titled Stick Welding Cast Iron with Muggy Weld. I'll put a link up here. That video sparked a little bit of controversy because many of the viewers were saying that's not cast iron that I was welding, that it was actually cast steel. Well, we're going to dig into that today. We're going to do a bunch of welding. We're going to talk about cast iron. We're going to talk about its properties. If you remember, I actually spark tested that piece in the video. So let's get going, let's do some welding, and let's uh, see what we can figure out. So let me get you guys up to speed. We spark tested this exhaust manifold and the spark tests proved to be cast iron. We then simulated a crack by cutting a roughly three and a half inch long cut into this. We stop drilled it. I then did a root pass with this 72 cast iron rod and then I capped it with this 77 rod. After I capped it and filled it, then I ground it flush so we could simulate that we did a complete repair. If we wanted to, we could sandblast this part down. Um, we could you know, paint it, whatever, high temp paint, whatever we needed to do. Uh, but the idea was is to see how seamless of a repair we, repair we could do. And within that, there is a damaged area. So I think what we're gonna do now is we'll start off our testing. We'll cut out a piece right here. We'll make a coupon right out of this and we'll look at the back side of our weld and see how it looks. Let's get going. And here's just a quick shot of that root pass while we were doing those little short one inch welds. An additional way to identify it as cast iron would be to drill it. When you drill cast iron, it's gonna produce a chip and material that is completely different than steel. Cast iron will usually produce like a dark colored, almost graphite material. And another way of checking it for cast iron is after you weld it, cast iron will really harden. Uh, it gets super tough. It responds completely different than steel. You'll see this piece is super hard when we go to dig into it. All right, here we have our cutout piece. And that's where our repair was. So you can see that's where we stop drilled it. There and there. And you can see how the root pass made it all the way to the back side. I say the next thing we do is let's cut this right through the center of that joint, see how it looks. So when I tell you that cast iron hardens up into the heat affected zone when you weld it, you're going to see a perfect example of this. Right here it's going through really well where it starts, but now I'm into the heat affected zone. I'm into that area where we put that slice on it and then we started welding it. This does not want to cut through it at all. Wow. That does not want to cut that. So you'll see that this is so hard, in fact, that I actually end up pushing down a little bit on the saw and I actually break the blade uh, because I couldn't get through it. And I ended up putting a brand new blade on this saw and with that we were finally able to get through this piece. But uh, it is super tough and unfortunately that's kind of what cast iron does uh, when you're working with it. it hardens in the heat affected zone. All right, just so you guys don't think I'm tampering, tampering with it, that's kind of like all my saw marks where I was trying to go into that. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to hit this with a file and see if I can get that cleaned up so it looks a little bit smoother. Uh, but I don't see any problems there. But what you're seeing there is uh, my saw blade. I could barely cut through that. Let me put a file to it. I just didn't want you to think I'm trying to pull some trick on you guys. All right, so I highlighted with a uh, white uh, Sharpie on the back and so you guys could see where that weld is. And I don't see any flaws. I just know it's really, really hard. What do you say now we uh, try to break it? Let's see if we can uh, bust the weld. All right, so I have the, the cut line lined right up with the jaws of the uh, of the vise. So I think maybe the best way to probably try to break this is an adjustable maybe. All right, here we go. Uh, 
Okay, take a look. All right, so surprisingly, it looked like it might have cracked a little bit along the weld, but then it strayed off and it actually took out some of the parent metal beside the weld and it never traveled over uh, to the to the uh, where we stopped drilled it. So, I don't know, kind of impressive, I guess. I mean, were we really surprised that it broke? I mean, cast iron is brittle and the rod that is uh, designed to weld it up is probably supposed to have similar properties to the actual parent metal that it's welding so but yeah I don't still don't see any issues with that that looks like parent metal there uh, that kind of looks like parent metal there that it actually ripped apart so yeah I don't know I, I, I don't see any issues with this uh, weld at all all right guys, now the part we've been waiting for, let's get this thing welded up. It's showing that this manifold is 3 16 so let's go set up our welder. We're using C25 gas, and since they don't have a cast iron, we'll call it steel. Uh, I'm using 30 thousandths wire, and we'll come over to our chart where it's 3 16 so 3 16 5 and 45. So, there's 45. 5, let's get to getting. I have to say I'm not really hopeful on these next processes that I'm going to do. This is just an experiment. I've successfully welded cast iron using uh, a MIG welder with some preheat, post heat, and some controlled cooling. But here I'm not going to do any of that. We're just going to uh, tack everything in place and I'm going to weld it up and see what happens. Cast iron is really finicky from one piece to the next. You could have one piece of cast iron that welds up fairly decent using uh, one of these processes that I'm going to show you. Uh, and then you may have another one that actually is difficult to weld up using a nickel rod. It's, uh, it just varies widely based on the components that are in it. So we've got it all tacked. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld it the entire length over here with MIG. It's not sounding good, guys. Considering we didn't do a preheat and postheat and we didn't peen the welds, this actually came out surprisingly well. Uh, I'm sure that there's probably some subsurface cracking uh, based on what you see in here next, so let's check it out. It's making a lot of sound. I tacked on these corners here just to hold everything around. You already see that one's already popped. This isn't looking good, guys. Listen to it. So what we're going to do now guys is we're going to let this completely cool down back to room temperature. Then we're going to weld up this side with some 6010. We're going to do that on the Blue Demon. A viewer was wanting to know recently whether or not it would run 6010 because most inverter welders won't. We're going to find out. Alright, here we go. 6010. Spoiler alert guys, do not attempt to weld your cast iron with 6010 or 6011. They're both a fairly brittle rod. They're both designed to dig deep. And with that wide gap that I have here, uh, it just wanted to eat right through it and blow through. This was more of a test to see if I could get that Blue Demon welder to run 6010s. And surprisingly, it runs 6010s very well. Uh, I ended up lowering the amperage on this eighth inch rod down to 36 amps and it still kept it lit. Look how great the starts are on this. Uh, so this was more of a test for that rod than anything because most inverter welders won't run a 6010 rod. And the results of this are what you would expect. It came out horrible. Tons of porosity. I, I realize I'm not grinding out my restrikes, but it just it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, this is just not this rod for this process. Welding cast irons dirty enough uh, without using a 6010 or a 6011 rod. It looks horrible. You'll see what I mean. 
All right, guys, so that was with our 6010. I think what we're going to do next is we'll TIG with some stainless rod along here. And uh, I don't know, maybe we'll uh, do, do along here. But before I uh, cover it up, we've already got signs of cracking that I wanted to uh, show you before I cover it up. So I don't know if you'd be able to see that, but we've already got cracking right in there. And the MIG weld is actually cracked right. It's starting. It, it's showing up there. So it is uh, starting to crack, and it's making a bunch of uh, creaking sounds on this side too. So, so sticking with the theme of trying things that we don't think will work, I'm using 316 L stainless filler. Now, this isn't typically used to weld cast iron, but I wanted to experiment with it and see how it would work. There have been mixed results using 309L stainless joined dissimilar metals or dissimilar stainlesses or even a low alloy steel to stainless 309L works decent for that. So now we're just using regular old filler wire ER70S2 basically the same thing that was coming out the end of the MIG gun I'm just applying it here with TIG and I expect the results to this to be about as bad. Oof. That's the famous pop that you hear people speak of when they weld cast and it doesn't hold. That's our 3 16 weld and I don't see right off the bat any visible cracking. Maybe looks like a little something right there. Uh, and then here's the ER uh, 7 OS 2. That's, that's easy to see right there. You can see that's all busted out. So where are we at on this, guys? Are we any clearer now than we were before? It may seem a little confusing. I'm not a metallurgist, but this is my take on this, okay? If this was regular steel or cast steel, all the processes that I did, we wouldn't have had any cracking because mild steel doesn't respond that way. You know, if you're welding up an I-beam, you're not going to do little short welds and then peen it over. Uh, the reason you would have to do that with these manifolds is because it's not cast steel, it's cast iron. That's why you have to treat it uh, differently. If it's a part that actually matters, I would want the right rod for the job. And that's going to be a rod that has a high nickel content if you're doing cast iron. If it's something that mattered, I would do a preheat. I would, you know, whether I got to throw that in my uh, barbecue grill, uh, get it up to temperature, then weld it, then throw it back in my barbecue grill and just slowly turn down the temperature over time. Or <laughs> you can hear it tinging. It's still tinging because uh, it's cast iron. Um, but I've had success with, after I'm done welding it, do a uh, post heat and then throw it in a thing of sand and bury it. Leave it overnight. Uh, let it cool down. Uh, cast iron's finicky. Uh, depending on the age of the cast iron, how old it is, um, you know, it's just like anything, different batches, different, different, uh, you know, elements that are within it. Uh, that can be trash content that's, that's inside of it. So that's where we're at. Uh, my mind is still not changed that this is a cast iron part. Uh, there was some independent testing done online that proved that these manifolds are actually, uh, cast iron so and you guys can research that out i've i've done all the research i'm going to do as far as these cast iron manifolds go want to thank you guys for watching thank you guys for tuning in if you want to find out what i'm working on before it even makes it up to youtube you can click the links down below you can find me on instagram and on facebook till next week guys thank you have a good day stay safe see ya